Good afternoon. I hope that you're enjoying the Open Source Summit. So basically with, with Guillaume, we are perfectly aware that we are the almost last session between, uh, before the, I would say the, the cocktail and the drink. So I hope that uh, you will be uh, very focused anyway. So uh, welcome to our session. So the purpose of the presentation, like you may just see, is about the Silva project. So if you were this morning uh, in the keynote session uh, on, the, on the presentation uh, with Harpit uh, Nicolas Homo, uh, our friends and uh, colleague uh, just introduced um, the project uh, Silva. And uh, the idea of this session was uh, to give you some thoughts about uh, basically uh, what is it, uh, what we achieve, and, and where we are going. The idea is just to bring you some information. So my name is Philippe Ansarguet. I'm the VP Software Engineering uh, at Orange, and I, will be, and I will deliver this session. And uh, Guillaume Nevicato. So I'm a Teco Cloud Program Manager within Orange, and I've got uh, a my role, role uh, within the community, which is a Silva co-chair. Okay, so let's jump in. So basically, uh, three, three parts in the presentation. Uh, why Silva? Uh, what is the approach behind? And uh, what we uh, deliver uh, since the beginning of the project. So um, just to jump in and to set the stage, I think that it's always interesting to understand what uh, is the, the market analysis and what is the, the journey on which the, the communication service provider are uh, undergo. So, since I would say uh, several um, decades right now, we, we have some challenges to, to solve, even if we jump to different, I would say, technical flavor of doing the implementation of the telco infrastructure. The first one is that um, we are working in a very, very, very siloed uh, approach where basically, um, when we deploy uh, one service, one VNF, we may have something like it looks like a dedicated infrastructure uh, at uh, every, every time. So basically, it's a lot of, uh, um, uh, I would say, unmutualization and burdens in terms of, of load to make all of this working. Second one is about uh, the security. Uh, of course, when you are, I would say, networking communication provider, you are a little bit more, I would say, uh, concerned by, uh, by hackers and uh, you have a lot of threats that are basically targeted into your infrastructure. Um, the, the third one uh, is about uh, the new way to implement and to roll out and release the, the network function. Uh, because uh, I, I think that you all understand that on the last 20 years, basically, we shift from a physical world to a virtual machine world and now to a cloud native uh, world. So into this cloud native uh, uh, movement, uh, basically, the CNF, so the cloud native network function, uh, are about to become the, the new paradigm to implement, I would say, uh, network uh, services. So it's an approach that could heavily leverage, I would say, a lot of our engineering, uh, but not only on the infrastructure, but much more holist at, at an holistic standpoint. It's about the way we want to manage the life cycle, the, the way we want to manage the operation as well, uh, for instance. So CNF uh, are the way to implement and to manage the life cycle, I would say, of the network function when you are uh, grounded into the cloud native ecosystem. And the last part uh, that is uh, perhaps not the, 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 the less important is about automation. Because uh, today, uh, if I step back to the, the first uh, topic with the siloed approach, the reality is that um, every vendors uh, are coming with dedicated solution to do automation nearly of every task uh, uh, regarding their network function. It's about the deployment, it's about, I would say, the operation, it's about the lifecycle management. And uh, from an operator standpoint, we are all uh, re re require basically to set dedicated skill center that are very, very silo in terms of skills uh, without the ability to move, I would say, horizontally inside the company. So 
It's basically the picture in which uh, uh, telecom operators ecosystem is living. So siloed approach, security threats, the, the new network function appearing with CNF and a lack of automation where we need definitively to uh, move forward. So, uh, Silva into this landscape. So, aware of um, basically the, diff the, the, the previous challenges I just introduced, um, I would say that it's about more than two years back, um, several operators, peers, and it's about basically uh, Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone, Telecom Italia, Telefonica, Orange, and uh, two network uh, function vendor, Nokia and Ericsson, basically decided uh, the, the, to, to try to tackle the challenge of uh, what I just described before. And the idea was born uh, on, the, on, on the observation that every telco, I would say, need at 80 or 90% exactly exactly the same requirement the same infrastructure and um, and and that's the very uh, first beginning and basically um, the project started in uh, i would say exploratory mode closed closed mode and when we reach a certain level of maturity about basically where we wanted to move forward what could be the outcomes for us as a telco but something that is extremely extremely important you will see that basically the stack that we implemented is okay for telco, but absolutely not bounded into telco ecosystem. If you are an industrial, if you are a satellite uh, operator, if you are uh, basically into a critical industrial process, you may need um, a, a stack or an infrastructure that could look very, very closely to what basically the Silva project did. And with all uh, this in mind, basically, we really quickly try to understand what was the best way to leverage this initiative. And um, we could have done it uh, the old way. And when I'm talking about the old way, it's JV, joint venture. But honestly, when you are entering into joint venture world, it's about legacy, it's about legal, sorry, regulation, legal, regulation, waiting. So it wasn't the, the mood of what we wanted to do. So it's totally natural, I would say, that we uh, invested into the open source ecosystem and try to find what could be the best house to host uh, the initiative that we were about to kick. And it's how the Silva project became the first uh, project hosted by the Linux Foundation uh, Europe. And it has been officially announced last November at the One Summit in Seattle. And I could say that the project really started, uh, I would say, uh, early January this year. So basically, it's a ninth month project uh, result that, uh, that Guillaume and I will share with you. The true purpose, basically, of the Silva project um, is twofold. The first one is about defining a framework where we can inject all the requirements that, basically, telco operator industry uh, need to tackle all the, all the challenge. So it's about releasing this cloud software framework. And I think that if you are here, you are very, very aware about open source and uh, based on my own experience, I didn't know an open source project that have been successful without having a reference implementation. And having a reference implementation for us was a key, key driver. You can't push a specification to everyone and <laughs> without bringing, I would say, the proof of how it's working. And, and it's the case. So in Silva, the second part of the ambition is to deliver a reference implementation. We must be very cautious. I'm talking about reference implementation. It's not a product. I would take a very, very concrete um, uh, point. For instance, when we, within Orange, we are um, deploying uh, basically uh, our Orange uh, Telco Cloud, we take the Silva project and we industrialize it. It means that we, you, you, you need to deploy it into your own environment. So Silva is a reference implementation 
and there is room to industrialize in specific, I would say, um, uh, area, the, the deployment. But it's not only about the reference implementation. We know that the telco uh, ecosystem uh, is uh, extremely complex uh, because it's extremely fragmented, distributed, and uh, the, the, the validation part is absolutely critical. And that's why uh, very, very close uh, to this uh, reference implementation, the idea was to have a dedicated validation center that based on a specific hardware, we deploy the Silva implementation and we are uh, able to welcome and host network function vendors to deploy uh, and have a validation uh, process about how their um, network function basically are working into the Silva ecosystem. So what you need to keep in mind is that, okay, uh, Silva is born in the tel telecom uh, ecosystem, but it's absolutely not bounded into the telco environment, first. Second one, two main objectives, to have uh, a, 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 a cloud framework Ref, uh, a cloud framework that gather all the requirements, and on the other hand, the reference implementation and the validation center part. So what are the opportunities that we want to unblock, to unlock? Uh, from a technology standpoint, uh, definitively, uh, the, the opportunities that we want to leverage is about uh, open source instead of proprietary solutions. Um, we prefer to heavily invest into a horizontal model that is able, I would say, to become the core foundation on which the company is able uh, basically to, to, to speed up their, their, their strategy in terms of, of, of telco cloud implementation um, because it's about the mutualization and it's something that is extremely important. At the end of the day, it's much more than infrastructure. It's about the way we want to automate the deployment of the network function and more importantly, it's about the way we want to operate the services. So Silva is an industrial grade cloud native telco stack, cloud native telco stack. So it means that from a technological standpoint regarding the operation, what we want to reach is to have the benefits of the native resiliency and self and auto link capability of Kubernetes and adding the capability in terms of I would say closed loop reconciliation and risk management that are automatically brought by a GitOps approach in terms of operating model. So definitively, the idea is to simplify and automate this operating and this, this uh, operational and operating model. From a business standpoint, uh, if you well uh, catch what I'm just said, yes, the idea is about cost reduction. Uh, um, in terms of mutualization, in terms of uh, operation mainly. Um, and we hope that we can target as well a uh, topic about sustainability that you will see is a track that is uh, dedicately rooted into the project, but it's too early to address this part. In terms of interoperability as well, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure that everyone in the room is a telco or telco related. We are spending our life, our life and our life to do testing, to do validation, to do certification. Honestly, if we can just simplify this and share the, the cross-testing uh, way of uh, uh, do the, the, the validation, I think that we could better focus on delivering value and, and promoting new services than spending time on doing certification and validation. So interoperability is key into this business side. Ecosystem. So the ecosystem basically is to leverage this ecosystem as a whole. When we are talking about the ecosystem, of course, there is the telecom operator. There, is, there are as well also, the, the, for sure, the network function vendors. But we have as well the hardware and bare metal vendors who are fully part of this story. And last but not least, integrators. We truly believe that Silva is extremely interesting for integrators because it brings a, a, a telco grade cloud native telco stack. And we have some, I would say, um, example today of integrators that use this Silva stack to do trial or assessment of deploying private 5G, I would say, on site uh, for their customers. So it's extremely interesting. 
how integrators are starting to take into account the value of silver. And of course, from regulation and security standpoint, is by design be compliant with the requirements, uh, I would say, at border of, 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 of Europe, and by design, integrating very high uh, security standards. So what is the approach? In terms of approach, we want to tackle five key pillars. The first one is to have a stack that by design, by default, on board, I would say the ability to manage uh, dedicated hardware uh, in terms of uh, uh, network cards, in terms of GPU, for instance. So it's taking into account that at hardware level, there are some specificities that are fully related to the telecom environment. The second one is by design to have deployment options that can span from virtual machine environment up to bare metal and to have this hybrid approach to be able to answer to the different challenges in terms of use case we want to target. Today, three mainly, 5G, RAN, and hedge computing, okay? The third one is about um, security and it's fully related with the previous, uh, the last point of the previous slide that I, I, I shared, uh, answer to the telco grade requirements and the local country regulation. Open source, definitively, uh, we want to uh, use the, the native API and standardized um, e ecosystem. Something, for instance, we are pledging for is to be able to manage the network function the cloud native way. It means that we need to have CRDs, we need to have operators to uh, uh, directly use the Kubernetes uh, way of doing the, 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 the implementation. I'm dreaming of a, a cube cuttle get uh, network service <laughs> and with, with some option. Honestly, uh, it could be a very strong game changer in this automation. And the last one, uh, of course, is about sustainability and energy efficiency, uh, where uh, we uh, could be um, an industry uh, in, in telco environment uh, that is uh, really under the, under the, the, the spot uh, in, on, on, on this topic in particular. And that's why we decided to natively implement it, um, a dedicated uh, working group on this. So here is how the, the project have been framed. Basically, we have six working group. Uh, the first one is dedicated to the, so, to the technical solution. Second one is about the validation center and is run by Luis that is just there. We have the security, we have energy efficiency, we have communication and option, and of course, uh, the, the topic of the, of the governance, because you may have uh, uh, read today that um, the project reached a new level in terms of maturity, becoming a, a funded uh, project to really um, uh, accelerate and speed up the, the, the development of uh, the project Silva. So basically what we deliver, we deliver up benefits at every of the four, I would say, stakeholders that are concerned. Up telecom operators, network function providers, system integrators, and uh, hardware or bare metal vendors. So um, for telecom operators, the idea is to have a common cloud layer and reference architecture really to reduce the cost in terms of global owning. And um, into this uh, cost, the, the part of the mutualization on the hardware, on the part of the mutualization, for instance, on the operation, it's extremely important. I can just share with you, for instance, that on the perimeter of Orange on a dedicated country, we observed that um, the, the solution basically, just for the hardware uh, uh, footprint um, is again between 20 to 100 percent since we deploy more than two network function on the same infrastructure. So it's extremely, extremely interesting. Um, okay, um, on the network function provider side, the idea is to uh, support uh, the, the build once and deploy many in different telecom operators and perhaps uh, limit the, the effort in terms of of, uh, of validation or, 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 or testing at integration uh, level, but also to uh, have the full benefits of an open ecosystem in terms of tooling to manage uh, the, 
the, the deployment of the network function and their operation. For system integrators, like I said previously as an example, the idea is why not to bundle um, uh, a Silva distribution to carry out dedicated workloads like onboarding and deploying mobile private network, but uh, we are currently talking with uh, companies that are uh, very industrial sensitive workloads to manage at the edge and it could be a perfect fit. And of course, for the hardware and infrastructure providers, it's about being identical. Uh, it's about having all the requirements that their hardware need to uh, fulfill, and as well to have, uh, I would say, um, implementation cases that are proving that their hardware is 100% uh, compatible with uh, basically the, the Silva implementation. Now I will hand over to my colleague uh, Guillaume, who will manage the end of the presentation. Guillaume, it's up to you. Thank you, Philippe. Very clear first part. I hope the second one will be also clear. And uh, yeah, uh, this is very important, uh, as mentioned by Philippe. We are a telco industry, so um, it's very important to not reinvent the wheel and to work with the exi existing ecosystem. So Silva definitely um, is linked to uh, the job that has been done at the HCNV, uh, what, what is the north interface of, of such cloud infrastructure? Uh, we spoke about security. Uh, here you've got ENISA. ENISA worked on the EUCS. It's a European uh, certification scheme on security. There are very clear requirements there, and we think it's a, a pretty good uh, scheme where we can rely on to build uh, the foundation of our security stack. Uh, of course, uh, as RAN is one of uh, our main use cases, it's uh, a key topic to have uh, uh, synchronization with the ORAN Alliance and the, there's a dedicated working group on infrastructure. Anuket uh, from the Linux Foundation Network is working on defining what is the appropriate design for, our, for our cloud infrastructure to host uh, telco use cases but is also providing many relevant uh, tools uh, for the validation center. CNCF, uh, our project, is uh, around the Kubernetes environment, so it's, it's just a, a natural uh, link. And two other projects that are important, Nefayo, Nefayo uh, open source initiative initialized by Google, is focused on the network functions, lifecycle management, and we want to have uh, this uh, pivot uh, with uh, Nefayo and uh, a clear interlock with the cloud infrastructure provided by Silva, uh, for example, on uh, deployment on bare metal, which is not at all the scope of Nefayo. So we have uh, a clear uh, a synergy between those two projects. And the last one is uh, Camara. Camara is uh, the, a project with defining and developing lots of uh, API for, for the network. And as we want to, the different operator wants to develop network as a service strategy, uh, having uh, the opportunity to host camera API on such cloud is very important for us. Now, coming back, to what are we delivering concretely? Yeah, concretely, uh, what we deliver is a distributed Kubernetes so it's a distributed CAS that you can host on a hypervisor, VMware, OpenStack, but uh, you have also the ability to uh, deploy it on a bare metal environment, which is very efficient for the UK we are targeting. Our main use cases, as introduced by Philippe, are the 5G core, distributed 5G core, uh, and uh, also uh, some uh, RAN use cases, some CDN use cases, fixed network use cases, edge use cases also. And with the edge, we are potentially also addressing many other sectors of the industry. If we think about agriculture, industrial, um, there are many uh, other verticals that need some distributed cloud with performance security. So here we are. And uh, this is an illustration where you can have this hybrid uh, deployment uh, with some CAS on hypervisor, but also CAS on bare metal. 
and different kind of um, uh, use cases you can host uh, in a multi-vendor approach. So uh, if we going a little bit deeper in this infrastructure, a key, the key element of this architecture is around uh, the declarative approach to manage Kubernetes. So our main topic is to be able to manage several high volume of Kubernetes cluster. We are relying on the cluster API. Cluster API is also uh, the, the preferred component at the HC and NAV on the cloud native infrastructure. And we are relying on these components to manage uh, the deployment, the lifecycle management of, uh, of the workload Kubernetes cluster. And we, real, we are relying on all GitOps workflow with Flux CD to manage this lifecycle management. So this declarative approach is really important to achieve our goals. Uh, Philip mentioned that we want to reduce the TCO uh, with uh, optimized run operation. And here, this is the tools that enables us to achieve this goal. Then uh, another important topic, there's the stack, but there is also the CNF validation program. And here, um, the, the aim is to uh, demonstrate that uh, we can onboard the CNF on the Silva stack. Um, we are doing some onboarding tests. We are uh, verifying the different cloud requirements. Uh, we've got a roadmap of different network functions vendor that uh, wants to, uh, to be uh, to in our validation center. So we have today two uh, validation center opened, one in Orange, one over in Telefonica. Telefonica was the initial one. And uh, Telecom Italia is pla has planned to open a new one and Telefonica has planned to, to open a fourth one. So a very dy dynamic work group here. And uh, as mentioned, uh, on the testing, we want to rely on what is existing on the, on the market. And we want to contribute also to, to, to give feedback to the Anuket uh, uh, project where uh, such tooling are developed. To illustrate also this validation program, uh, you, you have the platform that I've just mentioned, and you have an overview of the current um, CNF that has been validated, for example, Sixwind and uh, Oracle 5G uh, PCF. And we have currently uh, two uh, CNF from Nokia that are onboarded uh, at the moment. And we have uh, a roadmap of, uh, of new uh, CNF some are public this, uh, on, on, on this uh, picture, but we have lots of uh, other uh, network function vendors that ask us uh, to prepare uh, and to be on the list of this backlog. So uh, it's really key for the global adoption of a project. We mentioned that Silva was one year project. So now have a look on, the <laughs> on, on, on where we are now. You've got the, on the top uh, at the TSC board, the initial member, and now the, we have really a growing ecosystem. So around the, in this room, I don't know who is uh, operator. Is there any mobile network functions vendor? Yeah. Is there a fixed network functions vendor? Yeah. Is there any IT integrators around the room? Not here. And our IT editor, yeah, there are. <laughs> and IT hardware, no, not in this room. But yeah, uh, and so uh, we have this ecosystem. Many companies are here. And uh, those uh, logos on, the, on, on this slide are really contributing to one, to one or two of the different work group that has been shared previously. And we have also many entities that are evaluating also uh, to, to contribute. So we are, we are still in discussion with many companies. And, uh, and so it's a future contributor, so very important for us. In a few figures to, to show uh, this uh, growing adoption, 
the numbers of members in the communication, we've got a channel with a Slack, very active, more than 200 um, people connected. We've got about, we are about 500 features that have been proposed by the community in the last five months. We've got also more than a thousand line of code that have been added in the, in the last five months. As I mentioned, we are going to have a fourth validation platform. Um, active companies that have just shared uh, this growing ecosystem. The, we've got six active work group. And now we've got a four CNF from three different vendors that have, are in going to, to be validated or have, have been validated in the validation center. So I'm not going to detail all the roadmap, but just to, to say that we have delivered some key features that now allow us to host 5G core. And we are targeting now to uh, host uh, ORAN use cases. And we want to uh, progressively open to edge application. And we want in the, in the, in the coming uh, semesters also to address some offloading uh, features with FPGA. We want to go further in the network automation with LAN automation, with also the network modelization. Uh, we mentioned the NFIO integration. We want to make it very clear in both TSC where, where we are integrated, not only POC, but to, to have a, a, a smooth and a, a global integration of this. And of course, we want also to, to go further in, in security. There are lots of things to do in security to enhance the, the, the stack because uh, it's a very, there are lots of innovation in this sector. And I want to, to close this session with uh, the achievement and the next challenge before receiving your questions. But just to, to remind in four bullet points what we have done this year. So the project has been launched last year. Now we've got two releases of a stack that has been delivered already. We've, we have already addressed the uh, complex use cases of the cast on bare metal, uh, which is uh, a key focus for us. As we mentioned, we have already two validation centers open, and we have, new, uh, uh, we have a roadmap to, to have more. And this morning, uh, Arpit, uh, Yoshipura, and Nicolas Omo uh, mentioned that uh, for today, we officially launched this directed fund project. For us, it's very important to, to invest more on the project, to invest more on the development, to invest more on the, on the validation program, and also to have more visibility on the project. It's not only a technical project, it's also uh, um, a project that needs to move the ecosystem. So we've got already uh, 11 sponsors, and uh, we know that uh, before the end of the year, we will be more. Some are in the pipe. Uh, what is in front of us now? We want to uh, enlarge the use cases. We already talked about Open RAN, but Edge is also a key pivot to address new verticals. And we want also to achieve IT and network convergence. It's, uh, it's reachable, and we, have, and we have started to manage this part. We want to open our ecosystem with new operators, with new IT editors, with new integrators. So for us, it's important to, to enlarge this community and uh, to uh, recruit good, very good DevOps developer and very good CNF uh, cloud native. Uh, and as mentioned before, uh, yeah, why not to open to new markets? And I think there we, we can have a, a way to, to leverage also the, the project on the community especially if you need to manage lots of Kubernetes cluster, if you have security concern, if you need performance, yeah. So we need to, uh, to invite you uh, to know more about the project. So you've got the, the link to, uh, of our new uh, website to, to be introduced. If you want to collaborate, we've got our GitLab where you have all our code. And GitLab is supporting us uh, uh, to, to host uh, our environment. You've got the, the Slack channel and of course, we are here, we, you can have a quick session of Q&A today, but we have got three booths uh, at the ground floor, one in uh, LF Europe booth. Uh, Suzy booth is also hosting a Silva project uh, 
description and presentation, and it's the same for, for Huawei. So welcome and uh, have, a, have a quick talk to, to evaluate uh, this opportunity. Thank you, and we want to receive your questions. We, we've got two tracks on security. One is for long term to have, uh, to prepare, um, to facilitate, in fact, uh, the fact we can have an audit on the EU CS uh, security framework. So here is, 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 is a long term. So we, we cannot say the stack is certified EU CS because it's the operator uh, that will run the stack. But we can do many things in the audit process and so on. So this is for the for, 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 for our target, but we started the project with security team involved in DevSecOps with, uh, um, with uh, regular scanning, vulnerability scanning, uh, SBOM management. Um, we, want, we need to manage the uh, HSM configuration and so on. So yeah, security uh, started from the early beginning of a project, which is mandatory for such deployment with, uh, with GitHub's workflow and so on. Uh, just to sure. add something, to, to just a, um, a complimentary topic. Um, to be very clear, Silva is an integration project. So it means that we are uh, basically not uh, so much developing code. But where you are absolutely right is that we have a bunch of dependencies to manage. And we need to trust and secure the, de the dependency and the provenance of uh, basically the package on which we rely. So, uh, yes. You mentioned this bomb, but we have the topic about managing the provenance, having the signature of the of the different dependencies, checking at the at at, at I would say in, build an integration of the artifact. Uh, for instance, we are using Flux. Flux is able to to pull OCI repo that are heavily I would say uh, uh, secured in terms of deployment targets. So yes, it's definitively on the on the on the core of uh, of the project. Thank you for your question. Ah, this one is not super easy, but um, basically vendors. Okay, I. Okay. The 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 true requirement we need uh, to deploy uh, true cloud native workloads are quite simple. First, we need cloud native network function implemented implemented the right way. First, second, we need. I would say cloud native packaging that are passing the strict linter. It's already challenging at this point. The third one, uh, we need a uh, container based image that are uh, basically uh, with, without CVs onboarded and to have the dependency and, 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 and the provenance uh, managing. Fourth, fourth one, we need a trusted public repo where to pull basically the images we need to do the deployment. This one is, is a big, big one because it means that our uh, partners at network function vendors 
basically what we are expecting is that they become software, so, so, software company because the so, software company are pushing their artifact into public repo where or trusted repo where we, we are starting the, the deployment. So it's challenging on this part. And we have two more that are perhaps cherry on the cake, but not so much. The first one, we, we really want to have operators and CRDs to have a proper cloud native Kubernetes lifecycle management. Okay. And uh, so the kubectl topic wasn't a joke. It, <laughs> we all really want it. <laughs> and, the f and the last one is about uh, not reinventing the wheel on managing uh, basically um, the, 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 the traces, the metrics, the log, very standard, to, very standard way to do this uh, with, with in, inside Kubernetes, just reuse it and give us the right exporters to plug it into the, the right uh, uh, data and, uh, and, and, and analytics solution. So with those, I would say, six, six strong requirements, we are basically able to deploy nearly whatever we need. And, and to complement uh, this technical uh, answer, I will also add a process. Uh, we, if we want to work with this uh, ecosystem of CNF vendor, so it's important in the validation program that we have some clean team where we define some partners who can man manage and manipulate this uh, uh, CNF, this uh, under, uh, under IP protection. So it's important also, uh, even if it's open source project, on the onboarding, we are at the limit between the, uh, the open source and the IP protected. So we have to manage this in terms of process, not only on, on the technical aspects. So many thanks. I think that we are now out of time. Uh, and uh, and uh, so don't hesitate to, to ask us as you want any questions. Thanks so much. <laughs>